Guys, hi. Welcome to NARCCON. Today I'd like to jump straight into what I kind of use as an analogy is the narcissist symphony. The way a narcissist engages with their target in order to bring the target under control with the push and the pull and the unrecognized subtle introduction of drama and pulling away and coming towards you that is not so recognizable because it is so subtle as it's going on in your relationship. When we look back at the relationship, we can see the crescendos and the lows and the silences and the rush of love and the taking away of love and how the narcissist actually chips away at their target or their victim, particularly in the intimate relationship. But again, this technique is used in all situations with narcissists. So you can get this with a parental narcissist, you can get it in the workplace, or a friend can do it to you. It's basically the narcissist not caring about anybody other than themselves. So at the end of the relationship, people kind of go, I just didn't realize what was happening to me, but my gut was telling me at different stages that there was something wrong. And I give a bit of kind of pushback because I re recognized at various stages that I was doing all the running, I was doing all the making, I was giving loans to the narcissist, I was, it was all me and there was no give back. Any time I pushed back, the narcissist withdrew. So let's have a little look at that. It's much more recognizable, as I say, when you review the relationship history and you look back, and particularly in coaching when someone is coming and telling their story, they can see the amount of times that the narcissist left them and then they re-engaged in the relationship. All the breakups, all what we call in this community, the mini discards. So let's get into looking at how that happens. And I would liken it to a symphony. Music often reflects what happens in life. And a symphony, if you listen to it, can often start off very beautifully. So for the purposes of explaining this, I would like to let's create our own symphony. So the symphony starts off with the narcissist of the most beautiful music, the most enticing music, music that sings to your heart, that you recognize that the narcissist is composing for you and for you alone. It's your music the narcissist is reflecting back to you. You fall in love with it and you fall in love with yourself. However, you associate it with the narcissist and that is the illusion that the narcissist hopes you will accept. The narcissist is delighted to see the effect and the mesmerizing hypnotic quality of the love bomb upon you. It goes on like this for quite some time until you interrupt a little. The minutest interruption by you kind of saying, hey, for a minute, makes the narcissist crash and bang those symbols and say, you are not taking control of the situation. How dare you interrupt my music? My music is going to, way, going to go the way I want it to go. You have no say in how this goes. So you may even just say, can you do this for me? The narcissist becomes offended and withdraws from you. There's a crash bang, there's drama and there's silence. You are devastated because the music was so beautiful and it suddenly stopped and there's been a big bang and a crash and a lot of drama and you're getting totally involved in getting that music started up again. And so it goes. And as the narcissist 
goes along with the symphony. You get the big highs and the dramas, the big noises, the big, all the instruments will come together and they will crash down as the narcissist withdraws from you again. So the purpose of these mini discards and when they occur is something that it's interesting to look at if you review your relationship, particularly if you're wondering, were you in a relationship with a narcissist? You will find any time that you asked for your needs to be met or push back maybe and set some boundaries which are natural in, in you and also honor yourself for having those boundaries. Because empathic as you may be and giving and loving as you may be, I am guessing that those healthy boundaries and your instincts came into play. I'm guessing that you knew at the beginning of the relationship that there was something a little bit off with this person, but the music was so mesmerizing and hypnotizing that you wanted to listen to the end of the song. The narcissist chips away. They are prepared to wait because they have other things going on in the background. When they're giving you time out or time on the naughty chair, when you have put forward your, hey, can I have something here for me? You know, can, can, can we do something that I would like to do to bring a little bit of equality into the relationship? The narcissist gives you time out on the naughty chair. They may have a big blow up and drama and tell you, you don't love me anymore and I'm going off into the sunset. You've driven me away. You, it's all about you. They project onto their victims and targets. And they've also been chipping away at your self-esteem. So off they go and amuse themselves with another source of supply so they don't actually have that emotional break or trauma that you would have from a separation in an intimate relationship. Because remember, the narcissist is manipulating you. The narcissist is directing the symphony. And at this stage, the symphony is going to go quiet and the music is going to go very gently along as they go off into the sunset to procure supply, temporary supply, in order to sustain themselves during this time out with you. And that is the way the relationship goes with a series of mini discards. Any time you stand up for yourself in the relationship. So when the narcissist returns after one of these mini discards, you are less likely to do that again, because you've been groomed into the consequences of you standing up for yourself. Hey, little guy, sorry about this. If you're on a podcast, we have a little helper here who's getting a bit uh, disturbed at something he sees outside the window. Let's hope for some quiet. Okay. As the symphony goes, the narcissist has an agenda with you and the narcissist is basically mushing you down, softening you up. Each time you go through that pain, each time you go through the grooming stage, each time the narcissist introduces high drama into the relationship, they continue this excited feeling of dopamine and adrenaline which keeps your mind confused as well. It keeps the relationship not on steady ground. It keeps you in a state of chaotic thinking and high emotion. This may also kind of bring you back to a time in your childhood that you may recognize a similar feeling. We won't get into that in this particular podcast, but be aware of a familiar feeling and check out the, the video on familiar spirits that might um, resonate with you if this sentence has kind of clicked a light bulb on in, in your head. So the narcissist continues to play the game of the symphony with the highs, the crescendos and the lows. And it tells a story just as you would listen to a symphony of music. There's a rushing, there's a quiet. 
there is beautiful music and there's then cymbals clashing, drums beating, the build-up of drama again. What the narcissist is hoping is that by the end of the symphony, they're going to achieve the most amazing high in that they're going to be able to get whatever they came to the relationship for. However, the narcissist will often, because of their sense of omnipotence and godlikeness and entitlement, and their view that they have to have of you in the devaluation stage, that you will not cop on, that because of the work they've done on you, the devaluing of you and the abandoning meant of you at various stages and the grooming of you to not stand up for yourself. They're banking on your destruction they're banking on you not having within your soul the instinct to know that you're up against something dark. And they're hoping for the end of the symphony to turn out in their favour. However, don't underestimate your part in a healthy dynamic in the relationship where you did stand up for yourself, where you actually caused the narcissist to discard you I won't say a final time, but for what felt like a final time. Because remember, the narcissist always comes back. They just leave longer spaces sometimes between the times that they discard you and re-engage with you. And that also is a purposeful and part of the manipulation in that they feel you need to be left on the naughty chair for longer so that you will be chastened enough to understand that dare you do that or stand up and try and take control again, they will leave you for longer and longer and longer. And they may even introduce a new supply to you to further punish you for your transgressions. The best way for the symphony to end for you and for I and for anyone that has been the target of a narcissistic symphony or manipulation to bring you down is for the symphony to end with the crescendo and the narcissist to go off thinking that they can come back again and that when they come back again for the new set of music or the new tune that you will be totally under their control. Let it end in a crescendo. Let them go off and think whatever the hell they want to think. You've gotten the education in relation to how a narcissist plays in music, how a narcissist sets up their symphony. Let there be silence at the end of the drama, the heightened violins, the playing of the, the drums, the deepness of the trombone, the flute as times were mesmerizing and hypnotic. And let there be silence and our beautiful silence for the end of the symphony is no contact, is no contact. And we look back at what was played out and we can see the hills and the lows, the withdrawals and the highs, and the lows and the withdrawals to the final withdrawal and let it be. The narcissist does this with everybody. They use the withdrawal technique called in our community, the push and the pull. They blame you when they abandon you. Because in their minds, how dare you stand up for yourself? Honour the healthy boundaries that got the narcissist to abandon you maybe so many times. That got the narcissist, I hope this isn't triggering if you're at an early stage, of a narcissist leaving you. Further down along the road, you will understand. The symphony had to end 
and much better that it ended on the narcissist's terms. That is the illusion that you can leave the narcissist with because you have something of value that the narcissist is not aware of. You have been awakened to the fact that there are narcissists out there, that evil exists in the world, and that this is a game they play. And you are now au fait with the game they play and the rules that they all play by. It is as predictable as it is boring. It does a lot of damage until you understand that there is this type of creature out there that operates in this way and that plays on people's goodness, plays on their emotions and plays particularly on their lack of knowledge that this personality disorder exists. It's not just a small, tiny section of the community that's part of the psychopathy, that there are psychopaths and sociopaths who maybe go and murder people and do heinous crimes. I would consider narcissists just as heinous because they actually sometimes manage to mentally destroy people and manage to stop people living their life purpose, manage to get people to self-doubt so much and go, in, go into depression that they do take their own lives. Lucky are we who understand and have this knowledge and can go forward with this awakened sense, not just being paranoid that there are bad people out there, but to concentrate on the fact that there are good people out there and that if you stand in your purpose and firm your life up as to who you want to be and where you see yourself going forward, that the more light you put out into the world, the less darkness there's going to be. The more you're aware that there's darkness there, the more light you can turn on. And the more light you can turn on, the more the dark hides away. The more you can help other people who are coming up against something like this and saying, if a person is in a relationship with you and leaves you on a number of occasions because you're looking for a deeper meaning in the relationship or trust in the relationship or to have some of your needs met, this is wrong. It's wrong, it's unhealthy, and it's a dark manipulation. And even though you are very hooked and maybe trauma bonded and spiritually being played with and messed with, it needs you to understand this and to advocate for yourself and to look at this in a non-emotional way so that you can stop this. Stop it in its tracks, get away from that person because the trajectory of the symphony is full of chaos, drama, and takes you away from your life purpose and can leave people so depleted that it takes a very long time for them to build themselves back up. And again, it is the destruction of some. So let that not be you and let that not be anyone that you know this is happening to. Stand aside by them, be supportive of them and just recognise that you don't want to take part in a narcissist symphony. This isn't something you want to listen to for long or take part in. Strange analogy guys, I hope that's worked. And for anyone on video, you can see my little companion is bored. <laughs> so he says, I don't want to listen to any more stuff on narcissists. So guys, take care of yourselves. And I guess the next time I upload, I will be back in Ireland. But um, great to be here in the States. And yeah, thanks a million. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.